بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. My name is Yahya Kahil. I'm an IT networking instructor for the UAB department in ITAC in Riyadh. And today we going to talk about the weather radar or the airborne weather radar. Okay, as far as you know, we are dealing with uh, with the aircraft, which is drone aircraft. Which you know, if you look at it this way, you know, the small aircraft or drone like Albatross or these type these type of thing, they do not have a weather radar because they do, they do not fly that high altitude. Of course, if you look at the MQ9 or Predator or the Global Hawk, they must Global Hawk they must have what an airborne weather radar. Actually, the weather radar, we have so many types of weather radar all over the world, you know. Just like something, let me give an example, you know, the doubler one. The doubler one is used for the climate, you know, detecting and sensing. And for the aircraft system, we use what's called the airborne weather radar. The airborne weather radar normally is consists of so many components and installed on the aircraft to, to, to detect the severe weather ahead of the aircraft, let's say like, I mean, 550 kilometers or 300 nautical miles, actually. So, for the airborne to be operated well, it should have an electrical power. The electrical power coming from the aircraft system as a 28 volt DC. Okay, and before going into that system, let's talk about the weather radar itself or the airborne weather radar itself. The airborne weather radar itself is consists of three main Component. The first component, which is the antenna. You see, if you look at the double radar as an example, it's a concave. Why? Because sensing a high load of beam to the sky and receiving it back. This one does not send that much of beam. It sends just a little bit. So, in order to make this one go higher, which the antenna should be bigger, which is, which, is going to, which is going to be impractical for the aircraft system. So they have to have a small antenna with a high frequency produced by the transmitter. So if there is a lot of power produced by the transmitter, should have what? More power going to the transmitter. So the antenna is a flat or concave. Depends on the application. Depends on the software loaded within the transmitter and receiver. Okay? And then we have what is called the stabilizing mechanism. This is the stabilizing mechanism. That will allow the antenna will go up or down, left or right, depends on the aircraft. Attitude. The antenna should be stable like this all the time. So if the aircraft goes pitching up, you know, the system will move the antenna down. So if the aircraft goes down, the antenna will move up. So if the aircraft through left or right, that system will ensure the stabilization of the antenna at all times. And for the mechanism to operate, it should be connected to one important system within the aircraft system. And this particular aircraft, which is the Airbar Casa, it, contains, it's con it, it connects actually to what is called the gyros. It's an old system. Now for the new aircraft, we have what is called the IRS or AIDRO, Air Data Initial Reference System, which is what? Taking all the information from the aircraft and controlling the aircraft attitude. So the radar system will receive the information from the AIDRO and operate the mechanism. So we have the antenna, we have the stabilizing mechanism, and then we have what's behind here, we have what is called the transmitter, and receiver. So the transmitter, the purpose of that transmitter will receive like a small volume, like 28 volt DC. If you talk about aircraft like the 787 or 777, that will use 115 volt of AC. Because the, 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 the bigger of the antenna, it uses more power. So it uses 28 volt DC coming from the aircraft system, and the transmitter will send the signal to the antenna, the antenna will send the signal all the way to the four of of the aircraft up to 550 kilometers. You know, the, the, the receiver back, so the antenna will do what? Will map and detect the air, the moist within the cloud. Also, it will uh, size or measure the height of 
that cloud cell. And based on the information coming back from that sense, from coming, the feedback coming from the cloud, the antenna will receive it, the receiver will take it, and the for logarithm and software within the receiver that will transmit all this information into valuable data and send it to air to the panel as three color, blue, red, and green. And based on these three colors, the banner will decide which cell has the effect ahead on this aircraft, which cell is okay to fly through. And also, this type of transmitter or receiver actually will receive what is called ground mapping, which is the terrain. So it will tell you the height of the mountain in front of you and give you also what? A warning that you are close to this terrain. Also now in the new made weather radar, we have what is called the wind shear warning. Okay, the wind shear warning is newly added to the aircraft system. So that's all about the antenna. And we'll see you next lesson, guys.